So ADHD, I'm like, I'm not sold on it to a point where I think I have ADHD. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people use that as an excuse not to be successful. Oh, I totally did that. That was totally me. (laughs) And I'm like, no, dude, it could help you out. And everyone uses that as an excuse. No, I can't focus. No, you could focus. You're just focused on the wrong stuff. And the way schools are engineered here, especially here in the States, it's not meant for people like us. We're not meant to sit in a classroom and be told how to think. Well, this is this is the thing is that like growing up, I, I thought the only game that you could play was the, you go to school, you sit down, you face forward, you, you do the, the homework, you pass the test, then you move up to the next grade and you keep doing that until you get your degree and then you go work your W-2 job. Like I thought that was the game to play. And because the ADHD mind is not designed to play that game, we all feel as though we're losing, like constantly feeling as though we're losing. And I was like, well, if that's the game that we have to play in life, like I'm, I'm born to be a loser. I'm never going to make it. The thing that shifted was realizing that like you can't change the cards you're dealt, but you can change the games you play. And as soon as you start playing games where your ADHD isn't a weakness, but where it's a strength, where your abundance of energy, your creativity, your propensity to take risk, once you start playing those games, man, you're like sitting on pocket aces. What did you get to self-development? How old were you? Well, you know, that I was always interested in it. Like that was the thing. I, one of my degrees in, in school was in psychology. So I've always been interested in personal development, but I was I was the guy who was just going and collecting all the dots, but I was never connecting them. Like I was always reading the books, listening to the podcast, I was consuming, consuming, consuming. But the thing is like, you can't consume your way to improvement. You can't consume your way to fulfillment. You can only create it. And so the, the shift for me was during that period, like that guy who helped me out of the van with the idea of like building a business, he was a mentor who showed me that there were other ways Ways to live. And one of those was, hey, you don't just consume. It's not about like what you're putting into yourself. It's what you're doing with that. And if you're not going to do anything with it, then you're just wasting your time. And so that was like where things really started to shift is like taking all the lessons I had been accumulating and saying, okay, how do I connect this? How do I actually use this in my life? And how do I stick with it long enough to see results? For me, I was the same way. Like I, I read the books. I Tony Robbins I did all the stuff that he put out and I wasn't where I thought I should be. Yeah. knowing everything I know. And I just really had to stop bullshit myself and just take action. Like, what are you pretending not to know that you already know? Like, how many more podcasts can I listen to? Just fucking get it done. Dude, this is, I was just, I was just tweeting about this. Like one of the comments we, we get on YouTube, you know, because we talk a lot about this stuff. We talk about like how to build wealth, not just like financial wealth, but like mental health, physical health, like the full gamut. And we talk about these concepts and people like these trolls, they'll come into the comments and they love to point out like, ah, this is all just regurgitated nonsense from such and such and so, but so, so forth and so on. And it's like, guys, we're looking for what's true, not what's new. And so that means that there's going to be a repetition. And if you're hearing me say the same thing that you've already heard 15 other places, the problem isn't with the information. It's with your ability to execute the information. What we're telling you is the path. People want there to be like this new thing that they've never heard of. Like, oh, that's new and novel. That's what they want to to believe, but it's not. It's so much simpler than that. You already know. You're just not doing it. And that's the harsh reality is that if you're not where you want to be on your journey, and that's okay. Like we're always, we're always ascending at each new level. There's new devils that we have to fight, right? We have to overcome that. But if you're not where you want to be, just it starts by recognizing you have not yet done the things you need to do to get there. That's all. I didn't even become the person. Like the version of me five years ago would never be able to handle success I have today. And so from negative 80,000 to 100 million, if you don't kill the person who was in debt, you would burn through that 100 million pretty quick. So I know you you, you talked about a couple of books that helped you out, but really deep down inside, who did you have to become to just hold on to the success? Because people make money. Like I've made a lot of money in my past and I spent a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't develop the character I needed to hold on to the money until now, until recently in my life. So for people listening who just have this cycle of success and failure, success and failure, and they make money, then they spend money. How, what advice can you give them and how can you help them out? Well, I think, you know, business for me was like the ultimate personal development machine. Before that, I was collecting everything. I didn't have a vehicle to really put it inside of and test myself against like the whether or not I was actually improving and growing. And for me, business is like nothing more than the systematic process of exposing your own inadequacies. So your business is never going to grow beyond where you are. And I love that then because you can see this external reflection of who you are in your business. If you if you have a team that you don't love being around, if they're not highly motivated, they're not a players, that's a reflection of you. If you don't love your customers, the product that you're serving, that's a reflection of you and what you're putting out into the universe, right? And so the the way that I think about this is that everything that you want in life is on the other side of the skills, the resources, and the beliefs. 
And if you don't have those things, then you cannot achieve the thing that you're striving for. So if you have this in your mind, I want to be this type of person, just understand it's because you don't yet have the skills, resources, and beliefs. Because if you did, you'd already be there. And you'd already be now asking yourself, okay, what's the next level of this? Like, who's the next person that I'm trying to become? Because that's the that's the real mind, mind screw here is that, you know, we, we hear all the time, it's not about the journey. Or, I'm sorry, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And it's it's really easy to think, I understand that, like conceptually, but to live it on a day-to-day -day basis and realize that truly there, there is no destination that we're going to. The, the goal just is, is to try to progress towards something that has meaning and purpose in your life. And so for me, a lot of it was actually trying to come back to the fundamental of what is it that would make me feel as though I'm fulfilled, that would fill me with a sense of purpose. And it wasn't the external things that we spend our money on, right? It was it was about the idea of like, wh who do I need to become so that when I look in the mirror, I love what I see, you know, both physically, emotionally, when I look at that person, I'm like, I like that person, I like what they stand for. And that doesn't mean that they have all the things yet, but it could just mean I like that they're, sh they're trying, that they're striving, and they're working towards that because at the end of the day that's who we root for in the movies right that's who we root for in the stories of course it's not the character who has it all figured out it's not james bond it's the character who's like i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna figure this out it's the rocky the fight scene the training scene like yep. going through all the dirt and like trying to fight the russian running up the hill in the snow like that's the scene to be love like the struggle and that's the scenes that define us in our life so you said something really intriguing to me about it's about the journey and you think of people who are successful actors successful ceos and they're depressed and yeah. they either wind up committing suicide or like even athletes they get off the big stage and they have such a high level of success and they're so unhappy and people look at them from the outside like you have everything like, yeah. what are you unhappy about and you contribute that to them never understanding who they needed to become they were just only focused on the goal and never enjoying the moment because once you get it it flees you getting the new thing the shiny object after 10 minutes, you're done with it. Yeah, the way I think about this is it's the tyranny of the past and the future. So when you're when you do great things, you you are now tyrannized by one, the fact that you have this big ambitious thing that you're working towards the future, the future you that you could be the thing that you that Oscar that you want to win that big movie that big accolade, right? That's the future you that you're measuring present you against and you're not stacking up to that. As soon as you achieve that thing, now you have the tyranny of the past, which is you have to live up to this thing that you did. And so now you have to go do it again and again. And it's not enough just to go make a movie that you're proud of, because if, it, if you've won the Oscar and you don't win the next Oscar, you've actually gone down the mountain, right? In people's minds, that's how they think about this. And so Alan Watts, he's the, this philosopher from like the, the 50s and love 60s, love his stuff. And he, he had a framework that I found very valuable, which is just to think of life not as a journey, not as a place that we're trying to go to, but to think of it as a song. And the purpose of a song isn't to rush through to the climactic parts, not to rush through to get to the end it's just to play every note beautifully because you understand that this note played beautifully plays into the next note and the next note and it could just be that you have hit this high note and that is the climax but now we need to come down right and as long as you just focus on playing each note beautifully you can live in the present there is no anxiety when you live in the present you know, anxiety is just a root of living in the future, future pacing about something that's not yet happened or living in the past and asking and, and trying to live up to something that no longer exists. Yeah. So just last week or two weeks ago, I'm playing with my daughter and that book, I just kind of reread it again. I did the audio book, which is brutal to listen to, by the way. Is it? And, uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm focused on my phone. I'm trying to sell coaching courses. I have all this shit going on in my mind. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. And I just got into the present moment and it was the most amazing, like just night I had with my daughter. We were laughing, we were playing mm -hmm. and it's like, I'm success driven. But at the same point, at what cost? I'm forgetting about now. Yeah. And the sales will always happen. Like no one's going anywhere, but my daughter's going to get older. Like, let me enjoy the journey and enjoy where I'm at right now. And it was just like a light bulb went off last week. And I always say that to people, I always coach on that, but just for you to actually take your own advice and listen yep. to yourself, it was like miraculous. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you love this channel, make sure you click subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get alerted every time I upload a new video. If you wanna watch the full video, click somewhere on this page, I think right over here and drop a comment if you have any questions.